Hello Linux lovers, <laughs> how are you all doing? Uh, welcome back, my name is Wimpy, this is my world. Um, right, I tell you what, thank you all for stopping by on this my time Sunday morning, uh, which is a bit different. So um, I thought we'd uh, we'd finish off that uh, whole Ayatana integration in Ubuntu Mate by uh, working on Mate Tweak, uh, at least that's the plan. Um, and I see there's plenty of you uh, in chat this morning. I'm quite surprised. In fact, there's some of you from America. <laughs> Adam, for example. So I tell you what, let's uh, let's bring the chat in. Let's bring the chat in because uh, I always like to uh, say hello to uh, everyone that's stopping by here. Uh, mm, my transitions are all out of whack. Hmm. I'll have to look at that at some point. Right, okay, so, uh, hey Bacon Drinker, welcome back. Hello Hendrik, welcome back to the stream. Hello Big Pod, uh, thanks for stopping by. Uh, Big Pod has recently joined the Ubuntu Mate and Mate desktop team and also the Debian packaging teams. Um, it's been doing some good work there on CICD. Uh, yeah, Adam, what are you doing uh, awake at this time of day? And uh, hey, Paul, welcome back. Hello, Chris Weir. Uh, thank you for stopping by. I don't know that I've seen you in one of these streams before, but uh, maybe this is the advantage of picking a, a, a more sort of agreeable time on a Sunday morning. So um, uh, Antec Designs, hello, welcome back. Hey, Arubis Islander, how you doing? Uh, hey, Lotha. And Graham, uh, Graham, I've, I think I've seen you here before, haven't I? And Danny Roberts, welcome, and Stefan and Mark. Thank you all for stopping by. It's always a lot more fun uh, when uh, there's a group of you to chat to as we go through this. So um, if you are in the chat here and you haven't said good morning or good evening, depending on where you are in the world, then uh, do just introduce yourself in chat. It's always nice to welcome uh, new people to the live stream and welcome back old friends. So uh, do stop by. And uh, if you're here, uh, you may or may not know uh, that I've been streaming on Twitch a little bit recently. So uh, in the description below and eventually in the little animated lower third, you'll see uh, the Wimpy's World Twitch um, come up. Um, go and give us a follow over there. It's exclusively Linux gaming and fun and entertainment with Linux over in Twitch. It's none of this coding and development stuff that I do here. Um, and uh, I've, I was streaming Fall Guys whilst that was possible. I've recently been playing Hot Shot Racing, which is fabulous fun. That's an arcade racer, a retro style arcade racer. And uh, this evening I'm going to be streaming something over there as well. Um, and I'll be running a poll on Twitter later for some, I've got some ideas, three different ideas. So if you're interested in uh, joining in a bit of fun and games, then uh, I'll be on Twitch a bit later. So, uh, and also welcome to Alex. Alex, thanks for, for joining. And uh, if you haven't already done so, please um, consider giving this channel um, a follow or a sub, um, as it's called over here. I've been doing that Twitch, that, that Twitch thing, interchangeable terms. Right, so with that, there's a few things I need to, uh, need to go through. Uh, the first is, most importantly, um, where have we got here? I've got the essential things with me. So I have a, a fresh cup of coffee over here and then I have a Bloody Mary for a bit later on. So uh, we're all we're all set um, in that regard. Um, so uh, let's get on with this. Let's switch over to this view. Everything's on the wrong transition at the moment, but I'll worry about that another time. Um, right then, so uh, a little while ago I did the updates in Ubuntu Mate to um, to uh, make the transition to Ayatana indicators which are fabulous. So it's a cross distro way of doing that whole indicator thing and also cross desktop way of doing that. So um, that's all in the distro and the QA team, the Ubuntu Mate QA team tell me that's all good with the exception of Mate Tweak, which doesn't understand Ayatana indicators. So that's what we're going to fix today. And it's the outstanding item on this list that I didn't get to. So um, that's what I'm going to do today. And this is the bug in Launchpad that uh, Norbert from the QA team raised um, regarding this issue. 
And if I just head over to GitHub, um, Ubuntu Mate, um, and what is it called? It's called Mate Tweak. I believe Norbert was good enough to file a bug here as well. Yes, here it is. So it's the same bug, um, but he's done. he does the good thing of doing upstream and downstream. Hello, Mike. Uh, welcome to the stream. I'm um, Prunel. Hello. Um, so Prunel's asking, uh, does desktopify work on the Pi 3B plus? I think it does. Yes. Yes, it does. Um, obviously, you're going to experience some pretty hefty memory pressure on a 3B plus with just one gig of RAM. You'll get a way better experience on a Pi 4, even one with just two gigs of uh, RAM. Um, and also, you don't need to use Desktopify if you're interested in Ubuntu Mate, the pre-made images for 2004 uh, from Ubuntu Mate include a superset of what uh, Desktopify does. Right then. <laughs> yes, yeah, swap for the win on a Raspberry Pi, not great, is it? Not a good experience. So, um, it's been a while since I've gone through the uh, Mate tweak code. But that is here. I loaded it up earlier and I started scanning through it. Uh, Mate Tweaks implemented in Python. It's by and large one large um, Python file. Um, and the indicator support is kind of interesting because um, in Ubuntu, the Ubuntu indicators that we were using they don't all recognize the Mate desktop. So I had to do all this funky namespace overloading in order to get the auto start stuff running. And I don't think we're gonna need any of that anymore. So it, I'm hoping it will be possible to drop some of all of this boilerplate around starting indicator services and things. Um, so that I'll get to second, but the first thing we need to do is actually um, get the um, the detection of indicators working on Mate uh, for the Mate desktop when the Ayatana indicators are in place. And somewhere around here, I was pulling down a new daily image. There it is. So let's just drag this down in here. Um, there we go. Right, so whoop, let's get this in the right place. So um, that was a new daily. So I'm going to use quick MU to just delete that uh, groovy image of Ubuntu Mate and then fire one up. Um, this always starts the, hello, that's curious. Um, I'm looking, ah, right. So we'll do that. So I'm just gonna do a quick install of um, the daily image from uh, Ubuntu Mate uh, for Groovy. Um, and that's so that, um, I have a place to test this because uh, my development machine, unsurprisingly, is um, Ubuntu. <laughs> Ubuntu desktop with GNOME, given that that's the day job, right? So it shouldn't, it shouldn't be a surprise. Oof, that was loud. <clears throat> so let's get um, everything installed. It shouldn't take what, well, at least kick off the install. It won't take long. Uh, we'll do a normal, we won't get updates. We don't need to do that since it's fresh. So, what have we got here? <sighs> hey, hey Halam. Um, hello from Arizona. Um, surprising, what time is it in Arizona right now? How is it that you're, you're, you're up? <laughs> So, um, there we go, let's kick that off. It can do its thing, so. My password is test, by the way. I don't know if everyone knows that yet. 
Ah, oh, look, you'll see, here's the new option. Look, I don't know if you've seen this, but uh, for those distros that want to support it in 2010, you can uh, tick this box here to go through Active Directory enrollment and authenticate against Active Directory. So there's a little sneak preview for you. Uh, it's nice to know that the work I, well, I didn't do the work on the Active Directory integration. I did make some changes to the underlying install um, uh, in order to try and support it. it. Looks like that's been working fine. Good morning to everyone that's joining. Um, do say hello in chat as you join. Uh, right then, so let's, let's, um, whilst that's installing, let's go and take a look at the code so somewhere in here I will have so this piece around the power applet I think we will need to do and I'm hoping so that's fine enable applets that's fine this disable indicator stuff, I think we should be able to get rid of all of that. And the enable indicators, we should be able to get rid of all of that as well. Um, <clears throat> so let's just see, somewhere I've got some logic which is actually determining if the indicators are available and we're going to simplify that quite considerably because we're not going to go looking to see if every indicator is installed which is what it currently does um, and the reason for that is that if you've got the indicators the indicator sort of framework installed here we go let layout uses indicator applet so we probably don't need to do we do need to do that but we don't need to do this I don't think anymore so I'll turn that off <clears throat> and so indicators available false and then here we do all of this stuff so this is something we need to change I think I think that is going to be a different library that we want to find and then we don't want to do any of that stuff but we do want to do huh so part of it's already there look at this there's interesting uh, I think this was work that Mike may have done from the Ayatana indicator project so he's already added a conditional there so that's good but I think initially we won't be needing any of these bits because we're not actually we don't care about the indicators themselves anymore we just care about is the indicator framework available so maybe that's sufficient we'll find out in a moment um, and what else have we got hiding down here anything indicator related okay so that's saying you know if if indicators are available then what um, indicators to expose and I'll show you how this problem presents itself when that install of the VM completes we'll um, we'll look at that so uh, what have we got here so um, it's 3 45 a.m. in Arizona yeah, you probably shouldn't be awake unless you're planning to lay in good and proper. Uh, well, hang on a minute. 3.45 a.m. Yeah, on Sunday morning for you, right? Yeah. So. Hey, Chris. How you doing? Uh, right, let's see how the, uh, the install's coming along. Right, we're done. Let's uh, restart that machine. Um, so we'll just let that come back up. Uh, this is being emulated, or emulated, this is being um, run in a VM through um, QMU, as you can see in the title bar, but it uses my little quick MU project that we've been developing here. 
There we go. Wrong username. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, we'll send that off. Count one for the good guys. Okay, we don't need that. We can eject that. So if I just uh, run Mate Tweak, what we'll see, the issue we have is this. There are only two panel layouts being displayed here. They're utterly the wrong options for um, Mate, for Ubuntu Mate. So that's the bug that we're actually trying to solve here. Um, so um, let's think about this. If I bring up um, that, if I look at where I, okay, I'm not going to update those. Um, if I come up here, we started this VM from the terminal there and 10.0.2.4. Okay, so we'll just connect to the home directory, connect to server. <clears throat> That's not FTP, we want um, stuff that I haven't got hooked up correctly in my basic configuration. So that's a bug to fix another day. So uh, with that then, let's just take the, oh, hang on, let's look at the, what was the P of this machine. Okay. Um, So I'll just do this to um, development. Let's, um, oops. Uh, let's actually set this display size accordingly. working on a virtual monitor, which is a bit of a faff. Right, okay, there we go. Hopefully, there we go, there we go. Right, let's drop this down to, let's see, apply that. There we go, that's a bit more manageable. There we go. Right then, that works. Keep this configuration. Um, right, I'm just gonna get this set up so that I can copy the um, code I'm working on in my local machine to here. Um, okay, so if I run that, I should see the same thing. There we go, good. Same bug. Good, that's good, because I haven't actually saved the code in the other workstation. So now if I uh, remember to switch. Um, here we go. Right then, so we made a, a fairly small change. So we'll just save that and then go back to the VM and now copy that file over. So 
So let's see if that actually improves anything. No, it doesn't. So there's obviously that more to it than that. Um, so I need to go and look at um, this path here that we were seeking out. Um, enable in there we go I think I will probably find that that isn't on the system so just three yeah that path doesn't exist so However, Ayatana Indicators 3 does exist. Um, and then 7. And there we go. So that's what we'll need to do is change that path to. So we'll say if this path exists. Um, or that. This path exists and we want to put Ayatana in front of that and I think it was also lib Ayatana as well right then uh, let's copy that file over again SCP that file over and now run it and then look at the panels hey there we go so now we have the intended functionality restored and that's it end of stream I jest we're not quite done yet but that's the the main part of the bug resolved um, in fact it might be very close to being the whole thing in actual fact. So what we what we need to do now is go and clean up all of the ubuntu -y stuff. Um, so let's just make sure this still works. Um, the rest of the code should be fine. So um, let's just switch a theme. There's one that's working. The indicators are there, so that's all fine. Uh, Cupertino, this is what looks broadly like Mac OS. This is the default. This one I may have bugs I need to fix actually, let's see. Oh no, that appears to be there. That's working fine. So, uh, netbook. That should be fine. I don't think that does anything particularly clever. Yeah. Ah, oh, so somewhere here I'm seeing that a menu is failing to reload. So that's unrelated to the indicators, however. That's interesting that that's, that's regressed. So let's bring up traditional. So that's fine. Let's go back to familiar. interesting looks like brisk menu has um, decided to um, fall over entirely those are just deprecation warnings that's fine okay that's that issue with brisk is just one of those things that brisk we, we'd fix that last cycle that's annoying that that's come back there's work to do anyway today is the start of some vacation time for me so um, I'm going to be uh, doing a few live streams this week at random times. Uh, so stay alert. <laughs> right, okay, that uh, I obviously need to, let's bring traditional. Okay, that'll do, we'll, we'll use that for now. Right, so that's good. Let's, um, let's go to the code. So that in of itself is, 
kind of the main piece there. And now what we need to do is clean up. So let's think about this. The only thing that we need to, so in the past we needed to do a lot of things with indicators, which I don't think we need to do anymore. And this will certainly help the cross distro story. So we do need to still think about um, tilde. This is the applet sound stuff. Okay, so that's probably something we still need to consider. So let's go and see where, else, where we reference this. Enabling applets, okay, fine. And then we do the same. So here we need another change. Here's another change we need for the indicator, uh, the power service, which is, uh, yeah, okay. So the, re the thing here is that the Mate desktop has an applet for showing the battery status. And when you're in, an, in a mode where indicators are running, you don't want, um, you don't want the battery indicator and the power applet to both appear because you effectively get duplicate icons. So we flip like which is actually working and that's something we do need to keep. But indicator power, this is the Ubuntu indicators and we want to make sure we support the um, Ayatana equivalent. So if we just uh, take a little look here Let's see, we should find user lib. Um, um, hmm, okay, that isn't where I was expecting to see that. Oh, indicator, In, not indicator not Ayatana. I wonder where those are then. Okay, so we'll have to do a little trick here because uh, I can't recall where those are. So we will let's go in here and we need to search in Groovy for Ayatana. Uh, so Ayatana indicators, the clock, here's the power one. So if we go and look at this package here, we can scroll down and if I say list files, I can see that the thing I'm looking for is, it's not the translations, where is it? Okay, now I'm confused. Expecting to see an SO file in there. Here it is. Uh, it's in, ah, libexec. Well, there's interesting. There's interesting. Okay. Technically, I think that's wrong. <laughs> so let's, um, we can just get rid of all of this here. So we'll do that. So this is now only this is, this is making a change that only supports the Ayatana indicators, which is where I want to get to. Uh, I want to drop support for the indicators from this version onwards, uh, because then the other distributions that ship um, Mate desktop should be able to use this without having to patch it. So that's the, that's the plan at least. Um, that's all still fine. And we probably need the inverse of this up here. So we've got disable applets. We need to do the same change up here. So we're basically saying if if the in, if the power indicator is installed, um, then you know toggle some flags to disable the applet. 
So that's that change. That's good. Um, so now I now I guess it's this all of this stuff. I pretty much. Do we need this? We don't need the auto start. That's the piece we don't need. We do need the process killing. Think about this for a moment. I'll just think this through. So, um, hmm. Hmm. I don't think we want to do this at all. Or at least, no, we don't want to do this. If you've got the indicators installed, that's fine. If you're toggling. So all of this stuff here says, if this thing does this, then create the auto start, which we no longer need to do. We no need to long need to do this because the auto start files are provided. In fact, I don't even know we need to. Yeah, we. So indicator session, do we need that? Is that a root requirement? I don't think it is. I think we can just get rid of all of this. We'll just stub that out. And this we no longer require either because these are all the wrong names. These don't even register as these names anymore. So let's think now. Let's look at where disable indicators is referenced. Uh, disable Oh, that's the back to front. That's the thing I should be. So let's see. Just there. Okay, so it says here, if the panel layout uses the indicator applet, that namespace won't have changed. Then disable applets and enable applets. I think this is right. So I don't think we need this or this. We don't need the code I was working on. And therefore, I also think we don't need all of this boilerplate at the top here. We don't need any of this. So let's just go and see where that is referenced and make sure we've removed it because if we have um, only one it says <laughs> so what's Halam say uh, I use to tweak the traditional layout with a stash bottom panel and plank <laughs> Yeah, so that's not referenced anywhere now. So all of this can go. The date time, the sound, the messages, the power, we don't need to do any of this monkeying around with any of those files. So this makes all of this way, way simpler to maintain now. We do need this, we do need tilde. We can, uh, we can bump this revision because we will make a new release. So now let's just go through and see where else indicator is still referenced. And that's correct. We do want to do that. And we, so all of this is fine. So we no longer need 
those methods at all. Those can go. And what have we got left? Disable and enable applets. That's fine. That we know that's correct. Indicators available. There's our evaluation. So actually this can change. We can simplify this because we don't care for the Ubuntu versions of the indicators anymore now. We can just do this as Ayatana only. So we can just say if that um, and There we go, those are the only two conditions we need now because we only need to check for the Ayatana indicators. So, does is the Ayatana indicators installed and is the appropriate panel applet available? Okay, that's good. Save that. And this is then saying if the indicators are available, then these are the layouts that should be presented. So all of this is fine because we do need to know, for example, if you install Martin, well, in fact, Manjaro is pro probably not a fair uh, citation because um, Robert Tarry, who did a lot of the work on Ayatana indicators is now a Manjaro user. So I imagine that the indicators are available in the Mate implementation on Manjaro these days. But Debian at the moment, they're not, but they will be because I obviously contribute to that as well with um, Mike Gabriel. So we'll make sure all of this stuff is in Debian. All of the all of the packages and code is. It's just this stuff is not integrated yet, I don't think. So this is all fine. We're good. We are good here. So if I save that and we go back to our VM. Um, pull the version of Marty tweak over and we should see ah. Uh, I've busted it. <laughs> what have I? That will be this evaluation that we were doing here. So, what have I got wrong in there now? So if so I can only imagine that that path doesn't exist. So let's go and have a look for that and see where that actually resides. So what was it? Let's um, just move that to the top here. Panel um, applets. So there is no org Ayatana panel indicator. No, no, of course there's not. That's wrong. That shouldn't be namespaced. So that should be org. Yeah. Um, Marte panel.
Right, let me just bring up. Um, let's go and look at uh, Git Kraken and just see what that was because we clearly changed something there. We shouldn't have done all of that's fine. This should be, all be good. Marta, org Marte applets indicator app menu. Yes. for their indicator Marte panel outlet. Yes, okay, right, let's just go and correct that. So that was actually a mistake and that wouldn't have been doing anything before. Oh, I'm in the VM, aren't I? Um, So let's just correct this path. And uh, right, that should be finding the right thing now. So what is it? Indicator org mate applets not slash dot indicator dot mate panel applet. Okay. Right then, let's uh, let's hop back over here. And run that up. There we go, better. Good. Other than brisk having crashed, but let's switch to, yeah, let's switch to there. That's also interesting that that is not showing up. Hmm. Um, curious, I need to investigate what's going on there. Right, let's just log out. Log back in. Mm, that's not good, is it? It's completely failed to restore the uh, layout. Mm. 
So let's use familiar better. So let's have a look then. Um, so Maya says that Deepin needs my love for the Raspberry Pi. Um, does it though? I mean, um, there's enough code out there with Desktopify for other projects to uh, to figure it out. Um, I'm uh, I'm not gonna tr try and convert everything to the Raspberry Pi. <laughs> it's, a, it's an impossible task. Right. Okay. Let's switch to something else. Let's go to netbook again. Okay, so that does work. Okay, that is working. Okay, that's curious. I wonder why that was misbehaving earlier. Something to look into later. Uh, let's try Cupertino. Okay, right, well, actually, I'm surprised. That has taken way less time than I uh, I thought it would. Um, so I think what we'll do now is we will move on to how to commit all of this up. We'll then update the packaging, get it built in the PPA so the QA team can test it and I can make sure that everything still builds correctly. So um, we'll save just make sure that's saved we'll now bring up uh, git kraken and we'll look through the diff and make sure that everything's in a good place so the first thing i'll do is this very uh, i'll save that so this is removing all of the uh, auto start templates so we'll stage that first and we'll just get rid of those so So that's that done. Oh, need to sign that. Okay. So next up, we have what here? We have changing the path. So that change and this change are the same thing. So this is. Right then, so that's that. Um, got some white space cleanups here because I've turned on some of that, so we'll do that as a separate thing. So we now no longer have those. And let me just check. Also disabled, they also removed those. Okay, that's fine. I'll update that um, commit message. Um, So that's that taken care of. We'll now uh, stage. 
stage that. So we'll only, this is only toggling the app tops on panel layout changes. And then we simplify all of that. So that's only looking for Ayatana stuff. And now we have a whole bunch of white space cleanup. So we'll put that in now. So we've got that one, that one, that one, that one. That's all white space tidy up. we will bump the version to 2010.0. So that is that will push all of that up. So and then you can see there were some other merges and fixes from other members of the team. I think it's time for our first sip of um, Bloody Mary. Oh, that's better. Right. Um, so uh, we've got that. So now what we need to do is actually tag that as a release. So let's go over here. We'll, um, oh. Um, so what was that? That's 78. Okay. So we will, um, So this is going to be 2010.0. I name these releases after the Ubuntu cycle that they were created in. And the changes are basically um, That's that, and we will uh, correct the typo. So there we go. We'll now go back to the issues. Uh, we'll, because didn't do a commit where this issue was fixed so we will do a so somebody sent this um, PR I should have shown this earlier but this was the incorrect fix um, because we didn't want to keep any of that so Right then, so that's that issue we fixed. And I think, because we're going to update the packaging now, there is a bug here in the Debian packaging. Oh no, no there's not, that's a lie. This is a separate issue. Okay, so I don't know why you'd not have Maximus installed. That's a default thing. That's an, another investigation. Um, 
this can also be fixed via that because that is the same issue effectively even though it's an old issue um, and then we need to go into this pull request here which is ancient and also fix this here as well so we'll say there we go so that uh, now means that you know the cross distro support is that much better uh, so we've closed out the necessary issues there and uh, we'll now get on and update some packaging. So let's hop over here. Let's bring up a um, So I use Visual Studio Code. I've mentioned that many times before. But what I noticed is that um, Visual Studio Code now has a Yuru uh, theme available in the extensions um, marketplace or whatever it's called. So you can get it to fit in with the Ubuntu desktop. Uh, yeah, the Ubuntu desktop really nicely. Uh, right then. We shouldn't have anything outstanding. We don't. So let's go to development, Debian. Here we go. I was here earlier. Git status. So this should have. These were a bunch of um, patches that um, are no longer relevant. So we can stash those changes. We don't need them right now. We can pull from uh, the Debian upstream packaging. We look at the change log here because all there's all of the uh, the other stuff, right? So we will now um, create a new version of this package, um, which will be this 2004-10-0-1, and it's a new upstream release. And we want to close um, a bug in Launchpad. So let's bring this up. The bug we've got is this one here. This is the bug number, so we'll take that. I will make that invalid. Oh man, I'm not logged into my account. Uh, okay. There we go, right, let's just bring this up to uh, get signed in. Okay, let's just bring that back down. So I'm signed in now. So um, let's go back to that that bug. So this is now invalid. This is not only confirmed, but it's fix committed. And I'll assign that to myself. And this is high. Um, breaks functionality so what I'll be able to do now is reference this bug in the Debian package and when it gets uploaded it will um, automatically close this bug as you'd expect so uh, let's go and um, put this bug in here not ahead let's edit that Um, and I think we're going to need to drop some other patches, right? Because in this package, there is avoid killing brisk unnecessarily, which we no longer require. Um, adhere to the HIG. 
um, which I think is also fixed. That was a patch from Stuart Language, I believe. Um, yes, it is. So, if I try to build this, um, all of the build will fail because these patches won't apply cleanly. So what we're going to do is drop each of these patches in turn. So we will um, do them in reverse order. So we no longer need that patch. And if we take a look here at the git status, there we go. So we will um, so uh, Debian. So we will drop that patch with applied upstream. Um, I will, for the purposes of what I need to do in Ubuntu, I will, because I can't sync this from Debian right now, so uh, the import freeze is in place in Debian, so um, I can't upload this to Debian and then have it um, automatically uh, synchronized so I'll be uploading to both so that's that one done so now we'll uh, get our um, the next patch which was adhere to the HIG we'll drop that from the series oops went too far Um, so, Okay, that's that one done. And then um, get our um, Debian patches. We don't need the series file anymore. So we'll just close that in the editor. Um, and we don't need that one anymore. So let's uh, remove that patch as well. So this is why it's always good to not have to do all this stuff because patch maintenance is a chore. <laughs> right, so there we go. We've got... Um, a new version there. Um, it's currently in unreleased state, but if we uh, get the source tarball that we released onto GitHub earlier, that will download that, and then we can build a Debian source package. Mostly, it's going to tell me it's unreleased, so it won't sign it. But that didn't um, that didn't cause any issues. So. Let's uh, let's just um, I need 
to remove this momentarily. Right. Actually, I don't, do I? Because. So we'll do Debian change log. of my there we go so that's uh, Debian sorted so we're going to put an Ubuntu suffix on this because we're going to be building this for Ubuntu only to do the upload and we'll put a groovy um, suffix on it to build it in the PPA so we'll now build the source package Nice day for a bowl of ice cream, you say? Um, where are you, Paul? Um, I've, I've got the curtains closed at the moment in order to do this stuff. Hello, Billy. Welcome to the stream. Uh, right, so that's the source package built. So we'll upload that to the testing archive. Um, and this will just make sure that the thing builds and it also means that the QA team will have something to install later and make sure it builds correctly. So if we just hop back over here, um, we can go and look at not the play park, but the playground. You don't need to understand this. These are the two PPAs we use. Um, ah, Northern Ireland. It's a very nice day in Northern Ireland. That's nice to hear. It's quite good here as well. I've got the curtains closed at the moment, but I'll be um, I'll be uh, going out uh, well into the back garden uh, later to uh, play catch and trampolines with my daughter. Um, one of the reasons why I wanted to get this stream done before lunchtime so I can deal with uh, the shopping when it arrives and so here we go this is that's interesting <laughs> it's interesting there's a new version of Mate Optimus which doesn't appear to be I need to check what's going on there that should have been superseded by something in the archives I need to check on that in a bit so here's the package building, and you might be wondering, hmm, why is it only building for AMD64? And that's because it's a pure Python package, so it doesn't need to build on multiple architectures. Um, it just builds um, the Python package, and that will work on every architecture. Good afternoon, Morton. Welcome back to the stream. Thank you for stopping by. Yeah, I thought I'd do, you know, an easy, you know, sort of Sunday morning, early afternoon just ease myself into the day a rather delicious I have to say this was a very good idea bloody Mary very nice my wife did give me a sideways glance when I got the vodka out of the drinks cabinet at half past 11 or whatever it was um, but it's fine it's fine right so that that's building a little bit impatiently let's see if that's finished yet no, it's still standing up the build environment, but that will finish momentarily. Um, I'm pretty confident that nothing we've done there should interrupt the build. We know the code works, so um, I think we can uh, we can just push on and get that. So what we'll do is um, push this code. Uh, this is pushing the. Debian packaging code to Debian Salsa. This is where the various packaging teams in Debian, you know, collaborate on packaging new software. So that's pushed up to Debian. Hey, Avery, how you doing? Thanks for thanks for joining. And um, 
that will mean that uh, Mike will have that in uh, in Debian, so he can upload that to Debian. I'm currently building this in a PPA. I have a high degree of confidence that this is going to be fine. So we will do that. I think what I could do is I could go into my VM and I could add the playground PPA now, right? I could, I could, um, oops. Um, so I'll add that now. In fact, before I do that, I'm just going to do one other thing because I was curious that why there wasn't a newer version of this. That has not been uploaded to Ubuntu. Huh. Interesting. So I'm going to go and need to do that as well. So that's that's fine. Um, we'll, so we'll get that done at the same time. Um, right. Oh, oh, I just misspelled it. So this is the uh, QA PPA for the Ubuntu Mate team. So uh, Paul says, uh, if you can't have a nice drink on a Sunday, what is the point of life? Wise words indeed, wise words indeed. Um, when we um, go on our family holidays, my wife and I are extremely decadent. We start our day at breakfast. My wife uh, drinks Buck's Fizz and I just drink um, Carver. Um, with breakfast it's terribly civilized you know scrambled eggs on toast with a glass of carver that's wonderful which reminds me i am on vac vacation stay at home vacation so um i do have some carver in the fridge downstairs so maybe i'll be able to recreate that um a little bit of luxury moment <laughs> for the coming week right let's go and see how that build is coming along uh we don't need um, so let's just see how this is doing. Oop. There we go. So that built successfully. So that's good news. So we could, in fact, sidestep the whole waiting for the PPA to be available. because it takes a little while longer for a completed build to actually publish inside the PPA. And in fact, whilst we're waiting for that, let's go and get this Mate Optimus uploaded because that is a massive oversight. I don't know how I missed that, but let's go to... New upstream release. Okay. Let's um, actually, uh, I could manually sync this if the package is in Debian. Well, let's try that. It's possible that my, uh, Mike has done the, the right thing here. So is it sync package? There we go. Let me just uh, move um, the, ch oops, the chat to one side. I've just realized I've switched away from my uh, studio mixer over here. So one moment, no, that one. So let's bring you back up and go there. Right, so I'll just, Put the chat to one side for a moment. Um, so we're going to um, do Mate Optimus. And let's see um, if there's a new version. There is. So, Mike, I prepared a new version and Mike uploaded that version to uh, Debian and here it all is. So, I will say yes, let's manually sync that package from Debian because I like to try and do all of my packaging work in Debian rather than 
uh, what happens in um, other Ubuntu derivatives that ship the Mate desktop, wink, wink, who maintain a fork of the packaging and it gets messy very fast. So I try and do everything in one place and then there's one version of the truth and one set of bugs. It's much easier to maintain. Right then, so that should fix the fact that I'd had um, a different version of Optimus in the testing PPA. I wonder if that's given uh, Launchpad long enough to uh, get this one published. Not quite. Um, tell you what, let's do this. Let's go here, let's start a browser. We'll cheat. So what have people got planned for uh, the day ahead? Just chillaxing? Anyone watching anything good on Netflix or any other streaming services? Got any recommendations? Any games that you're playing? And if you weren't here at the start of the stream, you know, if you're, if you're enjoying this, give it a thumbs up. If you're getting value from it, subscribe. Uh, and if you don't like it, give it two thumbs down. Uh, Avery, I'm sorry to hear that, recovering from COVID. So um, uh, we were at a COVID testing centre yesterday uh, doing a test for my daughter uh, who's exhibiting symptoms, unsurprisingly, having gone back to school a couple of weeks ago. I think um, there's loads of that going on right now. So Henrik says, raised by wolves. Is that a game or a film or a TV series? So Chris says they're planning to go to sleep because it's nice that you, you um, somewhere like New Zealand or Australia or something like that. Yeah, well, she's, she's, she seems fine. We're just following the advice and doing the right precaution things, right? Um, and Henrik says that they just accidentally launched Zenotic. So that's interesting. So uh, if you weren't here at the beginning, I'm streaming on Twitch now, purely game and entertainment fun on Linux. And I quite genuinely have, not never, but almost have zero playtime in any kind of first person shooters. I've played a little bit of Ballistic Overkill and I sucked at that and I was mostly the invisible ninja because of the daggers. So not shooty shooty. And I did spend some time playing Rust, which has some shooting elements, but, you know, that wasn't um, the, the main sort of thrust of the game. Um, but I want to learn first-person shooters, so if you've got some experience in that, I'm looking for first-person shooting mentors. Maybe do a collaboration live stream, you know, you teaching me how to not suck at those things. And one of the games that's been recommended to me by the guys at Destination Linux is Zenotic because they run their own Zenotic server. So I thought that that might be a good place to get started. Um, so if you've got thoughts about that, although I have got Apex Legends going, so I'm quite, which I know nothing about other than the fact it looks like fun. <laughs> but I hear I would just be cannon fodder if I was to enter that game as a solo entrant. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm looking to try and balance a bit more of my time with um, some like fun things as well as like development things. But I've learned a lot in uh, in the gaming side of things uh, just from like uh, better managing how OBS does live streaming when you're doing you know um, 60 frames per second streaming. Uh, and that sort of thing, uh, NVENC in my case, but you know, what I've learned is applicable to other encoders. It's been good fun. And Chris Weir, I don't, oh, you are still here, Chris. Uh, so Chris, I was going through my Twitch channel, which has been uh, like until a few weeks ago, I'd really not been using, but I was setting up auto hosting. So I've, um, you're in my auto host list as a, you know, a, a Linuxy gaming type, uh, which is pretty much, uh, you know, what my uh, my channel is is dedicated to is, you know, using well Ubuntu to play games. 
So what I'm doing is cheating. I'm pulling the deb out of that PPA directly. Um, and then we'll install it. And did you know you can do this? A lot of people didn't know you can. A lot of people do use, you know, dpkg minus i. But look, you can do sudo apt install and then a fully qualified path to a package. And the advantage to doing that is um, it will resolve the dependencies for you. So uh, in, uh, unlike dpkg, which will install the package and tell you what's missing, you can apt install fully qualified path to a deb and it will say, ha, ah, well, these are the other packages I need and hop off out into the uh, repositories and grab them for you. So Chris does agree, Zonotic is a good place to start. Um, so I might I might give that a go. In fact, I I created the snap of Zonotic ages ago, so maybe I'll refresh that um, because I've learned like a whole bunch of ways to optimize things since. So maybe I'll do that and then I'll have a go at Zonotic. But I am looking for first person shooter in uh, mentoring. Uh, so let's just catch up on some of the other things here. Uh, so Halam's looking at classic Doctor Who and uh, uh, I'm not surprised you're going to pass out soon it's basically getting up time for you right now and Henrik says Raised by Walls is a series about a pair of AI raised kids on a distant wow okay that sounds twisty is it sounds a little bit AI like but uh, as in the film AI which I'm not a huge fan of is it good? Are you enjoying it? Uh, okay, and um, Paul M is playing Legend of Heroes, uh, Trails of Cold Steel. So that's a Japanese RPG by the sounds of it. Uh, I've never played uh, JRPGs at all. In fact, I, I've never knowingly played an RPG, I don't, <laughs> I don't think. Uh, Mark's going to go out into the garden. Uh, reading Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. Oh man, that is such a great book. I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, take take a bucket of ice and your gin and tonic with you. That sounds like a lovely way to spend the Sunday afternoon. Um, Halam's been playing uh, Golden Sun and Sigma Star Saga on a custom IPS Game Boy. Oh, okay, so you switched out the screen on a Game Boy Advance. Nice, nice hardware hack. I like that. Um... Uh, Paul, I'm glad you like that tip about installing Debs. So, um, whilst I think of it, let's just look. So, we're getting into a little bit of just chatting. So, I'll tell you what. Well, let's just finish the testing here. Let's just run the version of Mate Tweak that we've installed. And make sure we can see all the right things. There they are. And we'll switch to the familiar layout, which is the default. And there it all is, everything's working. So let's just close this out in terms of what we need to do to, um, to get this done. So first of all, um, in Mate Tweak, We have this diff, which is fine, and we will now save that file. We will build a new source package because that built and works as we expect. So there's a new source package. We will upload this source package to the Ubuntu archive for Groovy. That's done. So that will close out the bug in Groovy. We've closed closed out the bugs in GitHub. And um, we are done. I've uploaded, I've pushed everything up to Debian. We found a package mismatch, right? So what we'll do is we will go here. Hello. And I'll catch up with what you all were saying. So in terms of fixing up um, Mate Tweak, we're golden. That looks like that's done. Uh, it's 1 p.m. Uh, this is good for me because it means uh, I'm going to finish in time to play with my daughter before the shopping arrives, but also finish a chat with all of you. So I'm going to catch up with what you were 
planning for the day and how you're going to relax. So a sip of this first. So Big Pod says that he and DistroTube have been playing Zenotic. Okay, uh, so it sounds like uh, all of us Linuxy types are kind of coalescing around Zenotic, which uh, is a classic. Uh, I forget which game it was, which engine it was based on. Um, but you're not much into Linux gaming. You normally play games on Windows. Okay, because you play the big titles. Okay, so I've not been a big player of like content hey uh esan thanks uh for the sub i appreciate that and uh you've uh, started off the um in fact i need to update my overlay maybe i'll do that now uh so we're in here and we need to put our uh sub train above the alerts in fact wait Oh, I see. No, no, we didn't. We didn't need to do that as it happens. I'm looking in the wrong place. So we've got our little tuck sub train going. So if you haven't subscribed, subscribe now. Make the sub train last longer. Um, yeah, so I've not been... I, I'm... Uh, uh, I just love the retro games. I'm able to play the games that I enjoyed when I was a teenager today um, and play some of the games I could never afford to get or couldn't find or some of the arcade machines that I always wanted to play but weren't ava available in my local area. So I've, I've been doing that like that's how I like play games for fun when I'm relaxing in an evening in this room. Um, but just recently I've been trying like looking at like brand new games that are coming out on PC and finding out ways to play those on Linux. So in some cases, that's buy the Windows game on Steam and play it using Proton, which was great for Fall Guys until Easy Anti-Cheat had to be implemented because people were cheating in the game. And as of yesterday, when I last tried to test it, it absolutely doesn't work on Linux anymore because Easy Anti-Cheat update has been um, uh, pushed out. But I have been playing Hotshot Racing, which is a new retro style low poly arcade racer and oh man i've been having bags of fun if you want to see some of that head over to my twitch channel it's also wimpy's world on twitch and the last three streams i've been playing that game and having bags of fun with it it's it i mean i love races that's my favorite genre of game so i've been having lots of fun with that what i will be getting round to is getting out onto twitch for some retro gaming but also tonight I'm going to do a game stream and I, I think I've got three ideas. I was thinking like doing a playthrough of Her Majesty's Spiffing, which is a point and click adventure, relatively new. It's like 2016. And I, 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 I don't know, I, I put half an hour into it like two years ago and then I've never gone back to it. So I'm thinking start from the beginning, get a bunch of friends in the stream to actually like figure out the puzzles and solve it and play the whole game through or i start my adventure in learning how to first person shooter or i roll out a racer of some sort because that's my favorite genre of game but in time i'm going to start playing some retro classics over there either under emulation or on recreated hardware because i've got a couple of hardware projects that i've been doing so that's what's going over on Twitch. So, you know, do subscribe over there or follow or whatever you have to do over there. Hopefully tonight when I stream, that will be the bit that tips me over into getting affiliate status and I can start improving what's um, available uh, in the channel and stuff like that. So let's catch up. This was all sparked by Big Pod saying they mostly play the big titles on Windows, which is fine. What I've been trying to do is find ways to play the big titles on Linux. And I mentioned Apex Legends. I was, well, before it was GeForce Now, I was a grid founder. It's now GeForce Now. I've And I've also got Stadia. I was also a Stadia founder. So through those two platforms, that opens up access to a bunch of games that I'm effectively playing, um, well, not Stadia so much, but on 
GeForce Now playing on Windows but through the whole game streaming thing. So I'm just trying to find ways to access like contemporary triple uh, A games on Linux. Um, and my whole thing on Twitch is about doing that. Like, how do you access all the good stuff? Um, and I know, you know, there are other people that are far more experienced in that than I am. But, you know, I want to have a bit more fun in the evenings as opposed to just working on stuff. Uh, Mark, you're welcome for the G&T hint. You're welcome. Also, another, um, you may not have this in the house, of course, but a favourite of mine for um, refreshing drink in the summertime is uh, Jameson whiskey with ginger. It's That's rather lovely. Um, hey, Midge, welcome. Uh, you're making CG trees. What's what does that mean? What does making CG dream? Does that mean computer generated? <laughs> More information required. Hello, Teleboy. Welcome. Um, so you're an Ubuntu Mate user. Thank you very much. Um, Rum Blender on Ubuntu Mate Arm 64 on the Pi. Uh, having this issue on. Oh, yeah, I don't think so, because. The Raspberry Pi only supports OpenGLES, not OpenGL, so I don't think that's going to be a thing you can do. Sorry about that. Nothing I can do about that. That's a simple limitation of the hardware. Um, I say, Chris says, have I played, is it pronounced Nuez? I'm familiar with it. I know it exists. I've never played it. it um, what what engine was that based off? Is, that, is it... Oh, it, oh, sorry, this is the Xenotic thing. So Xenotic is based on Nuez. And Nuez was based on what? Something else, I think. On Quake. Is that is that the answer uh, that uh, Antec is providing there? And Chris says they've also been enjoying the Stadia and GeForce Now. Yeah, so Stadia is still limited on titles, in my opinion. Uh, it works very well, but it's limited on titles but i can access pubg in fact hang on a minute i've just noticed which it's this side i need to uh haven't quite got my lighting set up right there uh, i can't be bothered to fix it <laughs> just ignore the the flickering um yeah so i like stadia and geforce now um stadia works well limited titles geforce now uh, lots of titles also works extremely well uh, of the two I prefer GeForce now just because of availability of um, games yeah Paul Her Majesty um, is spiffing is great uh, and is a bit of a hoot and that's why I thought it might make a good fun you know let's play collaboratively you know tell Martin how to solve the stupid puzzles and just enjoy in a group so Big Pod um, says they usually play a few games. Uh, and you fall between World of Warcraft and Call of Duty. Haven't tried playing WoW on Linux for a while. Um, while oh, you, you have tried playing WoW on Linux. And while it works well, when you just... Yeah, I so I get that. So basically you're saying that when you d decide it's time to play a game, you spark up Windows because you know you can just get on with the business of playing the game and not have to do any tinkering in order to get a game to go um and i agree with that um what i'm trying to do is find ways where that's the experience that you can have on linux and in many cases or at least in a lot of cases you can get that on steam but sometimes the titles that you want either don't work on steam or aren't available on steam and so I'm just being entirely pragmatic, like where can I go? I used to have consoles. Um, the last console we had was the PlayStation 3, which burned itself into a ball of fire at some point. Um, and so that was no good. It was a common problem with the PS3. And con conveniently, that was the time at which Steam for Linux became available. So I flipped to being a PC gamer at that point. But we do have an Nvidia Shield in the front room. And that's um, how my daughter and I 
mostly play games together, although increasingly we play games on PC up here now. <laughs> so Midge confirms, yes, 3D models of trees. Oh, you're a 3D artist. Okay, well, that makes that makes sense. Uh, and Paul agrees. Jameson and Ginger is good. Yeah, it's not just good. It's the it's it's one of the standout. I mean, after a, a Bloody Mary, Jameson and Ginger is right up there. Um, Teleboy, uh, I. Uh, I'm sorry it was disappointing news, but hopefully it was, um, yeah, an answer that, that made sense, at least. Um, so, Midge asks, have I ever used a VM with GPU, GPU pass-through for gaming? So, in the description below, you will find a link to uh, our Discord server. I do encourage you to go and join over there. There's a real mix of, like, uh, Linux development chat games linux game streaming linux gaming media production just general linux enthusiasts across a pretty broad spectrum of desktop enthusiasts through to developers and streamers and gamers so it's a nice nice mix of people it's about 600 people or just over 600 people in there now if you go in there that was a conversation we were having the other day so what i'm um thinking of doing is because my daughter is sad that um Fall Guys isn't available anymore. I'm thinking about uh, setting up a Windows 10 VM with GPU pass through in order to play that game. And when I get to figuring that out, well, I know I know how to do it. I just haven't actually done it. But when I do that, I thought I'd live stream or make a video about it to let people know that the you know this is an option and also look at you know how well it works. So. Uh, no, I haven't done it yet, but I intend to, specifically for Fall Guys, but that may open up other options as well. Um, and then uh, the one thing I have been doing for quite some time is I have Steam running in LexD container. Uh, and then that instance is hooked up to a Steam link that's in the front room. So I thought at some point I'd do a whole video about running Steam in a container that has um, GPU pass-through. It works a little bit different in containers and there's some different things that need to be hooked up in order for that to work. But doing that, the advantage of using a container is um, you don't need to do the GPU pass-through as such. You just need to do the user space pass-through. It's actually mounting user space and video drivers in the on the host inside the container. Um, so it means you can isolate your game environment from the rest of your machine, but of course you're still running it under Linux, so you don't get, get that uh, compatibility that Windows offers you. So I thought I'd cover both of those at some, at some later point. Um, let's have a look here. So Stadia has the tech and works pretty flawlessly and GFN has all the games. That's a fair summary, Paul, I agree. And Lutris is excellent as well. I've not been using Lutris for anything yet. Like I said, I was trying to approach the way I'm doing things as um, it should just work. I should be able to go into Steam, buy a game, install a game, run a game, like enable Proton, run a game. That's what I'm aiming for. And where that doesn't work, well, then what are the other options that offer you simple ways to get at games? Uh, interesting. And there's lots of games that you play that uh, Chris says that work better on Proton than on Windows. Interesting. Can you give an example of a couple that are definitely better on Proton? And by better, I, I assume you mean uh, run faster. Yeah. Okay, so people are having to back. Oh, and Moonlight, yes. Uh, you can use Moonlight to stream games to the NVIDIA Shield from a Windows machine. Yes, I haven't tried that, but I'm aware that it exists. Um, keep Windows around for Fantasy Star Online 2. I have no idea what that is. No idea what that is. Right, well... First of all, 
thank you all for stopping by and having a chat. That was a lovely late morning, early afternoon stream. Um, it's always way more fun for me, uh, hopefully for you, when uh, when you all turn up and have a chat, especially at the end, you know, where we just like have a chat and you've got some interesting things and questions and ideas. I love that. It makes working on this stuff, although I could have probably fixed that thing in 15 minutes on my own, 20 minutes on my own, I would have been on my own. Not as much fun as talking to you all. So thank you for stopping by. But uh, we'll wrap this one up there. Um, do all those youtuber -y things, you know, like, subscribe, follow. Um, do head over to Twitch. Uh, Going to be streaming there later. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And... Um, Join the Discord, because uh, we can continue that conversation there. And in fact, what I'm going to do right now is, when this ends, I'm going to drop into the community audio chat room in our Discord server. So if you want to continue this conversation and follow up questions and what have you, uh, I'll be in there and we can have a chat um, right after this stream. So join the Discord, head to the community uh, voice chat, and uh, uh, we can have a chat there. But for now, thank you all for coming and I will see you next time as he looks for the right button. Bye bye.